Hello and welcome to a special edition of Battle Cry. I'm Gaurav Savant. As India celebrates entering the 75th year of India's independence and 50 years of India's most spectacular victory over Pakistan in the 1971 war, the Swarnim Vijay Varsh. Our top focus story on the broadcast is the Atmanirbhar push in defense manufacturing. And nowhere is this more apparent than in the indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant. As India celebrates Independence Day, what could be a bigger symbol than this beast of a warship? in India, by India and for India. Crafting our own weapons and equipment, this is what true independence means. On this special Independence Day episode, Battle Cry boards India's first Swadeshi aircraft carrier. The freedom of the grant. While Indian Air Force has the omnipotent Rafals, the Indian Army, the mighty T-90s and the Indian Navy, the Scorpion submarines. They're all extremely potent weapon platforms. The fact remains, none of them are a part of Make in India. And that is why this week we focus on on INS Vikrant. It's a mighty aircraft carrier, 40,000 tons displacement. It's just had its first successful sea trials and India today's Abhishek Bhalla is on ground zero. He sent us this report. The distant winds of India's independence have brought our young nation a great distance. As the world's largest democracy navigates the modern age, One stain remains on the armor of our national security. The fact that India remains one of the biggest importers of defense equipment. But this month, in a battle cry of enormous proportions, India signaled to the world that Swadeshi muscle in defense isn't some distant pipe dream. In an unmissable 40,000 ton message, Vikrant, India's first Swadeshi aircraft carrier, sailed out from her construction berth and went out to sea. And Battle Cry is now the first crew to get on board India's biggest home built warship for this special report. After a long wait, Vikrant went to sea for the first time. Sea trials along with helicopter operations considered the first big breakthrough of this brand new vessel. The mammoth warship will be ready to be commissioned next year into the eagerly awaiting Indian Navy. This takes India into a select club of seven countries. The US, UK, France, Russia, Italy and China that have the capability to design and build such a complex warship. The Indian Navy's previous aircraft carriers, the original Vikrant and then the Virat and now the Vikramaditya were acquired first from the UK and then Russia. As per naval tradition, ships never die and in keeping with this, the indigenous aircraft carrier will be back in its new avatar with the same name, Vikrant. India's first aircraft carrier acquired from the United Kingdom in 1961 that was decommissioned later was also called Vikrant. The new Vikrant is expected to live up to its name that means victorious and gallant. The long cherished dream of having an indigenous aircraft carrier has almost come true. 
and very soon INS Vikrant will be sailing in the seas. An aircraft carrier is basically a mini floating airbase at sea which sets it apart from other warships in terms of operations, reach and complexities. The aircraft carrier, as I mentioned, is central to a concert operation. So this will, uh, as part of a force levels, add to the versatility of our operations both in wartime and peacetime. Uh, so I think this ship uh, will play its role and uh, even more importantly being indigenous. It's a symbol of Atmanirbha Bharat. It's a very potent symbol of uh, the government's drive for Atmanirbha Bharat. And uh, when, when another country sees that such a sophisticated and potent warship has been designed and built in India, it will itself act as a symbol, as a deterrent, as, as a projection of our power, of the capability of the country. And therefore, I think it is very important in more ways than one. In spite of India's glorious maritime heritage, there was no indigenous warship design or warship building capability at the time of independence in 1947. The indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant is 262 meters long, 62 meters at the widest part with a depth of 30 meters minus the superstructure. There are 14 decks in all, including five in that superstructure above the aviation deck. The ship has over 2,300 compartments designed for a crew of around 1,700 personnel, including specialized cabins to accommodate women officers when embarked. While the final touches to construction are still happening, the ship managed to go to sea with 1,200 personnel on board. This tr sea trial was uh, essential for the ship to evaluate the way she keeps uh, the handling of the ship, the performance of machinery and various other equipment. So this gave an opportunity for us not just to try the sea keeping qualities of the ship but also the machinery in the entire spectrum of her exploitation and other ancillaries including the uh, various uh, uh, RO plants and other machinery were also put through the paces of trial. The ship's top speed is around 28 knots and cruising speed about 18 knots. With an endurance of 7,500 nautical miles, she can cover the entire coastline of India twice without any requirement of refueling. The INS Vikrant is an 18-storey building and a floating airfield. We are at the point from where fighter aircraft will be taking off. This is a floating airfield and it's extremely difficult for pilots to carry out operations in these circumstances because the landing area is only 190 meters as compared to an airfield on ground where the landing area is at least three kilometers. With camera person Satya on board, INS Vikrant Abhishek Bhalla for India today. With a displacement of about 40,000 tons, INS Vikrant has about 21,000 tons of steel used just in the hull. That's like three Eiffel Towers together. That's not all. The length of this aircraft, two football fields. The hangar large enough to hold 30 aircraft in that giant warship. India Today's Abhishek Bhalla is on ground zero and he tells us more about this Indian indigenous engineering marvel. It's a Swadeshi breakthrough of unimaginable proportions. The blood, sweat and tears of thousands of Indians has gone into raising this incredible ship. A marvel of Indian engineering and a proud sign of our maturing capabilities in national defence. Vikrant in its new avatar stands tall and proudly after years of toil. It's the sweat and hard work of so many that's made this possible. Thousands of Indians have toiled over the years and the ship will accommodate over 1,700 personnel when she's ready for operations. The Cochin shipyard that had expertise in building civilian commercial ventures took up this enormous challenge. There are 2,000 people working on board the vessel and there are another probably 
up to thousand people are supporting from outside and uh, this is probably last uh, maybe two year or so two or three years this is the condition uh, it was a very challenging journey because coaching uh, cpr limiter or indian navy never designed or built such a gigantic or very complex ship we have laid the keel in 2009 and we first uh, launched in 2013 august 12 and we are planning to deliver by next week and this will be it's learned that it will be inducted to dedicated to nation in the next uh, august 15th the earlier vikrant has had a glorious past playing a pivotal role in the 1971 war with pakistan this is also the 50th year of our victory in the 1971 war the swarnam vijay varsh and uh, this is uh, a very apt time to remember that in the eastern theater uh, the old vikrant That's its right. previous avatar played a key role in the victory in that theater and uh, it it also reminds us of the capability that an aircraft carrier brings so i'm sure the current vikrant will also add a fillip to this and will write uh, further golden chapters in our maritime history in the years ahead apart from the glorious exterior the krant is a technological wonder the ship is like an 18 story high floating building the steel used in the hull itself about 21000 tons is adequate to fabricate three eiffel towers the flight deck covers an area roughly the size of two football fields she will have two takeoff runways and a landing strip with three arrestor wires that will be capable of operating short takeoff but arrested landing aircraft as well as a range of helicopters the best part about uh, the present avatar of uh, vikrant is that it has been built from scratch as an aircraft carrier almost about 75% odd is indigenous content right from the steel to all the systems at the bottom of the warship is the engine room the place that gets the gigantic warship moving the speed at which she travels is controlled from this place at the bottom of the 14 decks this is the main engine room of the aircraft carrier that gives the punch the power to the warship and it's from here that the warship moves forward the propulsion takes place from here we are at a place which if the ship was sailing would be at least 5 feet under water this is the bottom end of uh, the aircraft carrier which has 14 decks the flight deck is at the top but we are right now at the bottom end of this aircraft carrier which gives all the power and the punch to this warship depending upon the mission we have uh, many number of people uh, manning here and uh, they are all are uh, related to certain kinds of work which will uh, you know finally starting of the engines stopping of the engines then connecting up getting some power to propel this ship etc so this this you can call it as the main heart of the vikrant the hangar area is around midway to the top this is the hangar area of uh, the ship and obviously uh, the aircraft have not come in uh, till now but uh, once it's fully functional uh, there'll be a, at least 30 aircraft uh, which will include uh, fighter aircraft as well as helicopters that can be stationed here it will take some time uh, for that to happen uh, but uh, we'll also show you how operations will actually take place uh, once the aircraft uh, uh, that are parked here uh, are taken out uh, in this area this is the lift uh, and this lift will facilitate uh, uh, the aircraft going up to the flight deck Other critical areas for operations are the electric room controlling power distribution and the ship's main control center. This is the nerve center of the ship uh, and uh, it's aptly called the ship's control center. So all the machinery that is fitted on board the ship be it the propulsion machinery the power generation machinery the distribution the air conditioning the refrigeration the fire fighting mechanism on the ship everything gets monitored as well as uh, gets controlled here there is adequate power being generated on board this ship to light up half of kochi city 
the Indian Navy is getting a feel of this brand new ship, one that will become the crown jewel of its fleet starting next year. 75% of India's trade by value, 97% by volume and four-fifths of India's energy needs are supplied by sea. Now, these statistics show you the importance of sea control. As of now, India has one operational aircraft carrier battle group, that's INS Vikramaditya. INS Vikrant is in the pipeline. But the Indian Navy is extremely keen on a third aircraft carrier and a carrier battle group. Three aircraft carrier battle groups will once, in a way, ensure India's supremacy in the Indian Ocean region. As India celebrates another Independence Day, this is also a time never forget that India's sovereignty and security stand more threatened than ever before. India's neighborhood, filled with hostile neighbors and non-state actors, ensures our country can never let its guard down. And that's why preparations to commission Vikrant couldn't have come at a better time. With the growing presence of the Chinese Navy in the Indian Ocean region, enhancing maritime operational capabilities is the urgent need of the hour for India. This ship in itself is designed to carry 30 aircraft, a combination of uh, fighter jets and helicopters, which will enable uh, this ship to exercise sea control very far from the shores of the country in places wherever it is required in the national interest to do so. So the significance of the aircraft carrier uh, is that it brings with it a multiplicity of roles and versatility, uh, which can be exercised both in wartime and in sea time. It's a very versatile platform. A carrier in itself is a powerhouse which is able to extend the reach power of any nation. Uh, very important for us, especially being a maritime nation and having such large maritime boundaries. And also the Indian Ocean, we being the preferred uh, security partners, uh, aircraft carrier will be able to extend our reach and enable us the flexibility to undertake operations at extended ranges. India currently has one active aircraft carrier, the Russian INS Vikramaditya, while the new Vikrant will be ready for operations by August next year. The Indian Navy has been insisting also on a third aircraft carrier. On the other hand, the Chinese Navy has two functional aircraft carriers with a third one expected to hit the seas soon, but will take a while for it to become fully operational with a fourth one also in the pipeline. Air operations are most crucial for an aircraft carrier, adding punch to warfare capabilities. We are inside uh, the flight control center or what in Navy parlance is called the FLYCO and you can understand it is one of the most vantage points on board. From here, everything that is happening on the warship, particularly air operations, are closely monitored and it's this place that takes care of the takeoffs or the landing. So you can understand how crucial uh, a part this is for all operations uh, on the aircraft carrier. The challenges in these operations are unique, very different from operating aircraft from shore. Major difference is the amount of space available. If you're talking about an airfield, you're talking about uh, 3,000 to 3,500 meters of of runway that doesn't move. Okay, but when you when you move it onto a, a platform, you're talking about uh, distance of length of say you know one like what we have. We've got two takeoff lengths of 140 plus meters and the other one of just about 200 meters for your takeoff and your landing roll of 190 meters. So. One side you have the comfort of an airfield which is about 3.5 kilometers on the other side you've got a restricted uh, landing space. Then you've also got your platform which is moving. You know, you, have, you don't have the, uh, have the privilege, if I may use the word, of your airfield being stationary in one place. So it's like when you're coming in and making an approach, you're actually, your runway is also moving in the forward direction. So you, know, so you need to balance and cater for all your flying skills and use everything possible to actually make good the future position of the ship that you are going to land on because your position on top of finals and finally where you're going to land on the ship would have moved a certain amount of distance so you actually need to cater for the ship that is going to be moving plus since it's a floating platform it also has uh, more 
uh, more directions of movement. With the first sea trials operating helicopters, the next big step will be to fly fighter aircraft off this deck. That will take India a step closer to be fully ready with this second aircraft carrier. According to Navy's assessment, over decades it was felt that India should have at least three aircraft carriers. But in the last few years, the Indian Navy had had to operate with only one. Now, with the first indigenous aircraft carrier ready and ready to sail soon, the Indian Navy is hopeful that in the next year, it will have two fully operational aircraft carriers. With camera person Satya Rautre, Abhishek Bhalla from onboard INS Vikrant for India Today. There are few countries across the world that can successfully build aircraft carriers. India is showing the capacity not just to build but also operate aircraft carriers and this will go a long way in establishing India's power as a seafaring nation. That is all we have for you on this India Today special broadcast. Many thanks for watching.